Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Amaika Ishaku, and today I'll be presenting my research, um, which is on low voltage high risk conductance um, DNTT transistors on polyethylene nucleate oils. Um, this project was conducted at the University of Strathclyde with my colleague Afra and supervisor Dr. Helena Gaskova. So, just a quick overview about the presentation. So, first, I'll uh, talk about why we use organic transistors. And then I'll talk about the structure, materials, and fabrication process of the transistors. Then I'll speak about the research motivation. And then I'll link the research motivation to the structure of the transistor channel. And then we'll look at um, the effects of channel geometry on the transistor's performance. And then finally, how the channel geometry affects the AC transconductance. So, why organic transistors? Well, um, we can use organic semiconductors. Um, for example, I've listed four of the, some of the best ones here, Pentacin, DNTT, um, BDBT, because of the air stability, uh, high performance as well. Um, as many of the other presenters have said, um, you can use you know, a wide variety of substrates, <laughs> such as uh, PN, glass, fabric, um, mechanical flexibility, printable wide range of applications such as flexible displays, sensors, analog circuits, low cost of manufacturing, and also low temperature fabrication. So uh, here we have the structure of the transistors that we used in this uh, research. It's a bottom gate, top contact P channel. Um, layers are grown using vacuum deposition. Um, so we have here the plastic substrate, which is about 100 micrometer thickness. The gate is um, aluminum. We have a bilayer of uh, aluminum oxide and um, phosphonic acid. And then, like I mentioned, uh, DNTT as the organic semiconductor. And then the source and drain electrodes are made from gold and very other thicknesses. Uh, so, this is motivation. So the motivation is to optimize the transconductance um, using a very simple technique. So the transconductance is a measure of the performance of the transistor. Um, it's usually, it's uh, proportional to the gain, and it's uh, expressed as the rate of change for drain current with respect to the change in the gate source voltage, where the drain current is given by this equation here, um, a function of the uh, channel width and length mobility, uh, the electric capacitance, gate source voltage, and threshold voltage. Uh, and also we have the uh, equation of capacitance and the transconductance. So in order to increase the transconductance, we can use some of the parameters shown here. We can increase the mobility, uh, but that is usually quite complex. It uh, requires um, complex um, fabrication processes. The capacitance is limited to the uh, relative permittivity and also the thickness of the dielectric. A decrease in the gate, uh, gate source voltage decreases the drain current. Um, so the last parameter that we're going to be looking at today is the channel length to width ratio. So what we can do is we can increase this parameter. So here's a, a standard structure of transistor and we can see here that it's um, a rectangle shape with um, W of um, one millimeter and L of 30 micrometer. So typically the value is about 33.33 for the ratio of W over L. So what we want to do is we want to increase the value from 33 to a value where we can get a high transconductance. So here's uh, the same structure again, but then what we did was we utilized our uh, interdigitated source to contact, which looks like this. So it's similar channel width, but what we did was we have this meandering channel, so we can increase the L to about 50 micrometer. The width is increased based on the, the, uh, the width of the gate from about one millimeter, which is shown here, all the way to about 18.23. So we increased the ratio to about 262. And so I mentioned this, um, W over L was above 300, and here we can achieve high transconductance. 
So I'll talk about some of the results that we got. Um, so what we did was we took some transistors with W over L between 290 to 910, uh, where the L is between 20 and 50 micrometer, and the width is about from 12.1 to 18.23, like I showed. So here we have a graph of the on current uh, on the top and then the off current at the bottom uh, as a function of W over L. So here we can see that um, as you increase W over L with the different channel length and uh, channel width, you can see the on current increases, which is what we want because we want to increase the transconductance. Um, here we have the, the off current. Um, in the case of the off current, we see that the, the transistors are split into two parts. Uh, well, yeah, two sections. And in both sections, it's independent of the channel length, so it doesn't matter if the channel length is only 20 or if it's 50, um, the distribution of transistors are like this. So we have the top one, which is about 10 to the minus um, 8, uh, and then the, the bottom the separation about 10 to the minus 11. So I'll speak a bit more about the up current uh, later on. So we looked at the mobility as well. Um, in the case of the mobility, we see that um, the mobility decreases as W over L increases. Um, this is because as you go to lower value of L, which is shown in the blue, um, the contact resistance um, starts to become dominant, so the mobility goes down. In the same way, the threshold voltage increases. Um, here we have the same situation from about, uh, when you increase WL from 290 to 910, it goes from 0 0.3 to 0 0.8, roughly. Um, the subthreshold slope uh, decreases from about 250 to about 50, uh, shown here. So the next thing we did was we looked at um, basically taking out the um, channel geometry, so by normalizing the on current and off current. So here we found something quite interesting. We found that if the gate uh, width is at 18.23, or the channel width is at 18.23, um, the off current is decreased, which is what we want. We want a very low off current and a very high on current. So here we have um, at 18.23 channel width, the transistors show uh, off current of about 10 to the minus 14, whereas if, if the width is less than 18.23, um, we have values that are about 10 to the minus 10. This is the same for the subthreshold slope. Um, we see that uh, at 18.22 width, we also have a decreased um, value of subthreshold slope around 50 to 100, whereas if, if the W is less than 18.23 millimeters, uh, we see this distribution here. So this is just to show you again what I just uh, explained. So th this value here with the channel width is uh, completely covering the, the channel um, at 18.23. Uh, we have this reduced values, and then um, when, when the W is less than 18.23, which is shown by the gate here, is slightly shorter, or slightly uh, less than the, the previous one, we see that the values are uh, increased. So um, I'll talk about how the channel geometry uh, affects the AC transconductance. So here we have the transistor structure. Uh, we applied a voltage of 0 0.2 volts peak to peak for the gate, and then the drain voltage at minus 2 volts. Uh, and then the equation for the transconductance is given, is given here. Uh, so we basically need to extract the, the drain current peak to peak, um, and then divided by the gate source voltage as shown here. So here we find that when we use the W over L between 371 and 494, um, we extract um, transconductance of value just about 36 to about 53 uh, microsiemens, which is quite high compared to other transistors. Um, we also see that um, the transconductance is uh, proportional to the cutoff frequency, and so these transistors with high uh, transconductance can operate beyond one kilohertz, so uh, in this range. So just uh, to finish off, um, I'll just summarize. So basically, we we spoke about um, uh, creating transistors based on organic semiconductor materials on plastic foils. 
and then we increased the uh, WBL between 290 and 910. And here we increased the drain current and also the AC transconductance uh, above 50 micro siemens. And then we achieved operating frequency beyond one kilohertz. And also we found that at 18.23 millimeter channel width, the off current is reduced and also the suppressor slope is uh, reduced. So I'll take any questions. <laughs>